That was Quidditch. And you're probably wondering, all right, what's going on? Let me explain. The year is 2005, and two American college students have been inspired by a game from a small, not so popular book. A sport where wizards are flying around and smacking each other with balls? Psh, we could do that in real life. And so they did. And before you know it, hey, a community form. And whoa, a rule book too? Suddenly not just Harry Potter fans were joining in and started getting weirdly competitive and also started spreading across the other countries around the world and therefore we could hold big international tournaments? Whoa! And I'm on my national team for Australia this time. We're trying to go for gold and get first place at this year's European Games. So now you're probably thinking, how do you play? How do you fly? Why are you playing such a dumb sport, you nerd? First of all, yes, it is a dumb looking sport and I'm a nerd. Second, I'll answer those technical questions a little bit further on into the video. But for now, as you can see, I'm still in my room and I need to get to Europe. So, cue the generic travel montage. Okay, um, I've just arrived at the accommodation that we're staying at, so... This is gonna be my new home for the next week. I'm gonna settle in and then I'm gonna to head to training soon. One hour later. So that was our first training. I think now would be a good time to talk about how chasers and beaters work. This is where voice over me comes in and says, you're an idiot that recorded hard to follow footage and couldn't explain the rules properly in person. So this is where I take over. Brooms, the main pain point of the sport, both outside and inside. Outside of the sport because we get ridiculed for it and inside because we have to play on them. They're difficult to work with, which makes it the main handicap and the equalizer of the sport. You're restricting major leg and or hand movement. If you can't keep the broom between your legs, you are dismounted, and the penalty is to run back to your hoops to tap back on. The other main overarching rule is tackling. You can only tackle with one hand, not from behind, and you can only tackle people of your position. Another similar rule of that same logic is that you can only interact with the balls of your position. Now moving on to explain to what the positions are and what they do. Chases. You want to score by taking the score ball and putting it in the score hole. Once you score, they get the ball and now you don't want the other team to do that. Crazy complex stuff. There are three chases and a keeper. A keeper is just a chaser with special abilities in their defensive half. They are immune when they're in the keeper zone so they can't be beat or tackled. Because of this they tend to be on hoops orchestrating defenses. You can tell who's who as chasers wear white headbands and keepers wear green headbands. Beaters use bludges to help their chasers get to the scoring hoops and stop other chasers getting to theirs. Once hit with a thrown bludger, the opposition player is dismounted and has to tap back on. The main issue about beating is that, that there's three bludgers and four beaters. Therefore, there will always be one beater without a bludger. So bludges to beaters is like oil to America. It's a scarce resource and beaters will fight anyone for it. It's a big catalyst for players to start and dictates the speed of the game. Beaters wear black headbands, saving the most iconic for last, Seekers. Everybody knows what the Seekers are from the books and the movies. In order for it to work in real life, the snitch needs to be a real person. They're basically another referee, but they're physically involved in the game. They have like a rippable velcro tag with a tennis ball inside of it, which is what Seekers have to rip off in order for it to be called a catch. So what it boils down to in real life is Seekers are wrestling against a sweaty ref to rip a ball off their butt. When I say it like that, it doesn't sound too hot, but I think it's the position that takes the most amount of fitness and skill in the game. Considering JK Rowling had absolutely no concept of weighting of scores in sports when she was writing about the Seekers, it's been adjusted to be worth 30 points instead of 150, and the Seekers are released 18 minutes into the game instead of from the beginning. But for now, this is all you need to know about how to understand and spectate the sport a little bit more. So hopefully Quidditch makes a little bit more sense. Back to us in Europe, we had just finished our first training and we we're gearing up for the rest of the week for the weekend tournament. Drop bears on three! One, two, three, drop bears!
Okay, so it has been a hot minute since I last recorded anything, so let me catch you up to speed. We last had our training session on Tuesday, and it is now Friday. Since then, we've had more training sessions, a trivia night. In the acronym NASA, what is the first A stand for? Aeronautics. We even went on a little field trip, and we practiced our team chants on the way there. We were very fortunate to be able to explore the cliffs of Moa. Bunch of tourists. And just this morning, we checked into the tournament. As I'm recording this, people are downstairs getting their hair cut and getting ready for the weekend. Meanwhile, I'm hiding up here and I'm being nervous and anxious for the weekend. And there's a lot of reasons for that. For one thing, even though we've been doing all these events, it feels like we're just starting to get to know each other. And we've had three months to prepare, but of those three months, we've only played with each other for three weekends. So I feel like we're not as prepared as we would like. As well as the fact that this is something I've been working towards for six years. From the outside looking in, it's very hard to understand how can someone be so invested in such a silly looking sport. A lot of people just dismiss the sport initially just because of the brooms, which makes me really sad because I genuinely love this sport a lot. It's a very dynamic, fast-paced sport that is a lot more complex than it looks like on the surface. It's one of the few things that I could just talk about for days on end, and it just gives me a great amount of joy. I thought I'd give it a go and leave when I figured it out, but I'm still here to this day. Anyways, on to a side tangent. I'm supposed to be feeling nervous and anxious. <laughs> I'm playing on an already established team where there's players that have won titles together and it's quite nerve-wracking that I have to try to live up to that expectation. So the chance of us taking gold is quite a real possibility and some of the favoured teams aren't really a fan of that. And if, they, if Australia managed to win the EGs, European champ would be Australian so I hope... <laughs> I hope... Uh, we will step it up and then prevent that from happening. I do feel like it will unite European countries though, because if there is a UK uh, against Australia in the final, for example, uh, I would root as hard as I can for UK to win. And some context for that is that the French and the English are already quite tight rivals. And to which one of our captains responded with this. It's quite amusing. And also, emergency news update. Quidditch is officially changing its name to Quadball. This is going to be the last official international Quidditch tournament ever. And this is my first time playing at an international level. If that's not pressure, I don't know what is. Anyways, that's enough moaning from me. So, so our schedule for tomorrow is playing against Switzerland, Catalonia, Italy, and Wales, with Italy being the most difficult one from what I've been hearing. Even though it's only one game to supposedly look out for, I'm still going to be playing at an international level and I'm panicking a little. But I know I shouldn't be stressing because I know tomorrow morning will come just like... So it is game day and the nerves didn't go away. But still got to eat breakfast and still got to push through the nerves basically. I need to smash this down. Big ball of oats. It's time to go to the fields. <laughs> My team managers giving me fist bumps really made it sink in that we were playing Switzerland very soon. Yep, sounds good. I was just trying to take in the scale of the tournament. It was huge. There was another four pitches in the direction that I was walking towards. Once warmed up, we got into our pre-game routine of getting lined up for our equipment check and then gathering up for a team huddle. We we're obviously flustered given how we butchered our own chant on our first attempt of the weekend. The game plan was to put a really explosive and fast line to start every game to get us a lead. then sub on lines for good cohesion for set plays. And this works surprisingly well given that this was the first time we were running it ever. Within a few minutes, we were already up by several goals through solid fast breaks. It was a good game to start as we played out our nerves. 
Going into our next game against Catalonia, we really wanted to get down and play how we wanted to play against Italy. Because we're going to go into the next game playing Italy and we know that it's going to be a harder game. Blow out a couple of those cobwebs and work into our game even more. Even if it meant scoring less goals and being a bit more uncomfortable. It was good as we ironed out the kinks that we needed to this game. Regardless of the hold-ups, it was still a solid win for us, with the score being 140 to 40. Well done. The one thing I think we can work a little bit better on is, is exactly what Sam said during that half-time. We want to hit the hoops at the same pace as the ball's arriving. Get the fake, get the fist pump going, all right? Then you'll get goals. Because if you're pumping, then you'll just hit the next hoop over. That's all for me. So we knew what we needed to work on, and we just needed to tweak it before the Italy game. In between games, we were kind of exploring the venue, but most of the time, we're relaxing and getting much needed carbs into our bodies. As well as mentally preparing for the next game, especially with Italy on everyone's mind. Okay, cool. Alright, Italy. So Italy is our pot two team. So that means this is probably going to be our toughest game of the day. And it also means that their first couple of lines, possibly throughout the whole game, are going to hold us. Stick to the plan. We use our heads, we use our passing game, we use our bodies, put ourselves on the line and we work hard and we leave it on that field. The beta game is quick, but it gets distracted. Okay, so take advantage of that. It's gonna be just to grind, all game. All game they're gonna come at us, all game they're gonna try and frustrate us, all game we're just going to have to play the better Quidditch, be the more physical team, dunk the ball in the hoop, yeah. maybe even go back for seconds, right? And if we're able to execute on that, they won't be able to go with us. Be Let's go to drop Get excited, up and about! So the game went off to a less than ideal start. We didn't either get the bludger or the quaffle, which is the only two contested balls, so we failed on both fronts. But a solid shot block got us the ball back and our first offense opportunity. We were trying to move the ball around to look for gaps in the defense and penetrate it. But that's very difficult when they have two bludgers on hoops. So we used our passes to get out of danger zones. Their defense was a tough nut to crack. There wasn't any gaps for us to capitalize on. So we reset our offense back up to the top to give it another red hot go. What was stopping us from scoring was their beaters. So our beaters started walking into their space to push them out. That gave us a lane to run down and get our first goal of the game. Evidently, the rest of the team was absolutely elated. Honestly, that play felt like it was just slow, long, and very drawn out. Spoilers, this was how most of the players went throughout the game. Everybody knew that this was going to be an important game because the results of this would influence how the pods would form for tomorrow. And because of this, the rest were trying to be as thorough as they could. Maybe even a bit too thorough. This just compounded the tension and the frustration of both teams. Each of the breaks were just so long. And because of this, both teams struggled to get into a flow state and get points on the board. It was quite a slow paced game, but we were very evenly matched. Whenever they score a goal, we'd score a goal, and vice versa. The scoreboard was very even until much later on in the game, so I'm just gonna skip to that part. Flash forward to when Seekers are released. The score is 60 to 40 with us in the lead. Although we were up, that point difference didn't amount to much as a snitch catch would close that gap slash give them the win. So as we had expected, it was a tight game where it would come down to the snitch catch. Therefore, both the teams would put all their bludges onto the snitch. At this point, the scoreboard didn't matter as long as we maintained that same point difference. The scoreboard would continue to rise while the beaters and seekers were battling for the snitch. Both teams knew that the game could be over at any second. Seekers from both teams had multiple attempts. The pressure of catching the snitch had gone on for multiple minutes until we finally got a catch. And the catch has to be, and it's Australia's win. Congratulations on that. With the score of 80-70 right now, which makes it 110 star 70 for Team Australia. And that's what we knew people would bring to us when we were talking about it at training, right? We're the villains here. We're the uninvited guests, mm -hmm. and as much as we party with everybody before the game, that means squat on the field sometimes. Yeah. You don't have friends there, and they showed us that. Yeah. 
They, they <laughs> absolutely came out and were prepared to spill blood. That may be the best game Italy has ever played. <laughs> and we took several punches to the guts, to the face, to the cards. Pressure makes diamonds. Yeah. Yeah. I see a lot of diamonds. <laughs> a lot of diamonds. Very rich man. <laughs> The win gave us a much needed confidence boost and lifted a huge pressure off our shoulders knowing that the toughest game of the day was behind us. And with that, our last game of the day was going to be against Wales. Relatively, compared to Italy, it was a much more chill game and we could take it at our own pace. It was a nice way to end off our day with the score being 160 to 30. Welcome back to my room. It is quite late right now. It is 11.09. And I should probably just try rush through this. Apologies if I slur any of my words. So after all the games had ended today, the tournament committee came together to organize all the pods for tomorrow. So tomorrow for the games, we're playing France first off. And depending how we do for that, the better we play and the more wins we get, hopefully the easier our way to getting to finals is. I think the main competition that's been outlined is probably UK, Germany, possibly Italy, and another team that I can't remember off the top of my head, but there's a solid competition of it could go any way between the few teams that are that I've just listed. So no matter how it goes, it's gonna be a tight competition and we'll have to work for it. But in saying that, we won't really know until we actually play the games tomorrow and we'll see how we actually do. My body's gonna be very sore. I need to go get some sleep. So I will catch you tomorrow. Even though I had slept a solid 8 hours, I was still feeling so tired and just fatigued. Somehow, I got out of bed and eventually made it to the fields. The first game of day 2, France. They were a good team to start against because it felt like they were a step up from yesterday's teams. So it was a good reminder that this is day 2 of the tournament and there will be harder teams if we want to make it to finals. It was pretty equal footing to start off with but once we found our groove we started to break away. When Snitch had come on, we were almost 100 up. France ended up catching when they were down. And this is a situation where the rules vary from the books slash movies. So here's a quick rule book workshop to explain what's going on. If a team catches when they're still down in points, they're able to continue the game with overtime. The Seekers and Snitch are removed and then it just becomes Quaffle players and beaters again. The Snitch catch is added to the scores. Then a new point floor is set to the higher team score plus 30. Whoever reaches this new point floor is the winner. Before this rule was added, teams that were out of snitch range first had to get back in range and then catch to win. This change makes it so that teams that are down in points have a better way to come back from. Unfortunately for France, this was not the case for them. Hey Pam! Dunk this, we win! With this win, we were officially in the quarterfinal. As I was saying yesterday, the more we won, hopefully it would get more easier games in order to make it towards finals. Our win against France rewarded us a game against Austria for our quarterfinal. Although they were a solid team, I felt like they weren't as strong as France, which was reflected in the scoreboard by the end of the game. Nothing stood out in the Austria game, it was just a fun and solid game to play. And before we knew it, we had our semi-finals game scheduled against Germany. And so now it's 11, so you have 15 minutes until we meet back in the change room. Okay. Suit up, let's go again. Yeah. Let's do it, drop base! Yeah. Hey, let's go! And with that, everybody was in high spirits. We were theoretically one win away from locking our position in for the finals. With our quick little intermission, we are once again back on the fields. Germany's a good team. They've come through to a really hard side of the bracket to get here. They're going to be feeling good about themselves and they're going to be playing hard and they're going to be playing to win, right? They are, they are playing for themselves, they're playing for Europe. Alright, we're playing in oh, a yeah. semi-final for Ooh. Australia. Ooh. We are the drop bears, we play good Quidditch. Yeah, we are. This jersey means something, right? Yeah. I'm stealing this right out of Neil's mouth, but it's the thing that riles me up and I love it so much, right? We put this shirt on. We do it for ourselves, we write for our teammates, we're on the good live stream, we've got the double live stream going, we've all been checking in, group chats at home, everyone's behind us. Here's where we play. We knew we couldn't get cocky as they were going to be a tough match. We were just excited to play a semi and try to solidify a spot in the finals. We almost ended up getting the balls, but we ended up getting scored on instead. 
Germany had a really strong start and held us off for a long time using their bludger control. Once we got control back, the game started to be a bit more free-flowing. We were able to force our passes, get possession, and use that to score. Both teams had some sick plays, like this deflect into a pass to score. One of our beaters also blocked a goal with a bludger, which is an insane and rare occurrence. The game played very much like Italy. It was a very tight, toe-to-toe -to -toe game. When the snitch had come back on, it was almost the exact same score as well. To win, we had the exact same game plan. Let the quaffle players do their thing, while beaters and seekers just put everything on snitch. Except this time, it didn't work out for us. And just like that, right before our eyes, the catch was called good for Germany. We were gutted to say the least. We had set our eyes on gold, but we'd been cut short. It felt like everyone's expectations and drive to continue to play the tournament had just been ripped from us. No way. Big, big game coming up. Sit on the floor, take that time. I like, Lucy, I hate it so much. We've all been knocked out of games before. We've all been knocked out of tournaments before. Games are hard. But it's just hard. If it wasn't hard, if we, if we didn't feel like this, it wouldn't mean anything. Right? You don't get to celebrate your wins if you don't also feel bad about your losses. Okay? And that's okay. It's really, really, really okay. Alright? Yeah, we're not going to be playing for one and two. But we're going to be playing hard for number three. We're still playing for ourselves. We're still playing for each other. We're still playing for everyone at home. Okay? So again, take this and feel it. Like you don't have to be your case straight away. Take a bit of time. That's totally fair. Get some food in you. Time for pizza and in you. Skittles. We did the only thing that we could. Take a breather, take the loss in stride, and gear up for bronze. Everyone went to go cope in their own way. However, Tim, one of our coaches, decided that he would do so by almost shaving his head bald. Unprompted mum was like, you have beautiful hair, you shouldn't cut it. That was the week before I came. That brought much needed smiles to everyone's face and really lifted everyone's mood. And so with Tim's shiny new head, we laced our boots back on and got ready for our third place playoff. We were lined up in a tunnel with our rivals, Norway, in order to be caught out and welcomed for our playoff ceremony. Once we got caught out, we piled out the door single file and were greeted by a large crowd. It was insanely nerve-wracking being the centre of attention in front of so many humans. However, once we had lined up again, I think there was something about this ceremony that just calmed everyone down and made it feel much more surreal. Especially in the pouring rain that had just decided to appear for our national anthems as we were singing it. In the pouring rain, with the end of the tournament in sight, I felt everyone knew that this was it. This was our last opportunity and we weren't going to waste it. We leave it here, on the field, in Ireland, with this team, in these jerseys, for our country. Yeah. Yes. yes! Let's rock! That's all I gotta say. Woo! Let's do this! Yes. 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 Have fun! Drop And so, it was time to do the final brooms up of the weekend for us. Shout out to the Italian player that saw the opportunity to make a joke and took it. It was because of him I was able to get the contested ball. It went to a very explosive start from there with us getting the first goal. Relatively, the game was moving at a much faster pace than previous games. It seemed like the ball was always moving and there was something happening even in between transitions of plays. That to me looked a bit cheeky. That looked a bit like net contact to me. 
It felt like both teams just wanted to make something happen and play good Quidditch. There were just some really sick players from both teams, and it was just peak Quidditch. It just felt like when either team scored, it was like, damn, that was deserved. Even though that was the case, this was the clearest of all the weekend that we were in the enemy arena surrounded by European teams. The cheering for Norway was just infinitely louder. We had to be our own supporters and playing was difficult enough as it was. We had to hustle harder, be louder, and commit more to make up for the lack of supporters. Alone, we had to keep backing ourselves, continue playing, and keep putting goals on the board. Yeah! Oh. Yeah. We're proving how much we wanted this by really getting in there and landing some huge hits. Someone, someone swap her out, please. Please, Sorry, that's my part. Three steps against the Big tackle on. The big tackle on. Slowly but surely, the scoreboard continued to pile up. And also, this moment happened in a third place playoff game. <laughs> And inevitably, once again, the snitch was back on pitch. And ridiculously, Norway just caught straight away. And suddenly, they were rowing? Not gonna lie, this was really amusing and wholesome. But fortunately for us, the catch was called no good. So they caught again. This time, it was called good which was fine as that was part of our plan. We were up in the scoreboard and we were backing ourselves to beat them in the quaffle game. We have goals in hand. Yep. So, that means we play our game. We don't need to panic. The worst thing that can happen here is conceding, okay? And we've got a buffer. You don't need to worry about that. We play controlled, we play our passing game, we get the balls out to the sides and cut through. Push really okay. hard. Great screens. Five, six more minutes. Push really hard. Let's go. Make everything count. Finish yourself. Let's play some good Quidditch to finish yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And so, hyped, we were geared up for the final stretch. All we had to do was score three more goals and the game would be ours. It went off to a good start with us taking the first goal. But Norway returned it to us straight away. The cheering for Norway just felt so much louder. Yes! Goal for Norway! Beautiful finish! The scoreboard was creeping up and we were still toe-to-toe. We just had to hit one goal to get the game-winning score. It felt like we all knew that, and we were starting to choke. And they were gaining on us. We had our opportunities, but we just weren't finishing. Every time we went up on offense, it felt like we need to finish this game. And every time they came up on offense, it felt like they were closing in and they could finish the game soon themselves. We just needed that one last goal. And the goal was called good.
haven't played a game like that. It was a good game. We were working so hard. We were putting so much effort in. We didn't panic on the ball. We're all ready and focused on what the goal was and trying to keep going and keep moving and keep working. And that's really all we can ask of you. Right. I'm real happy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm real happy. You played so well. Think, take a second to soak it all in. Think about how far you've come and what this means. And yeah, let's go get this. Yeah. One last ding ding. Yeah. Sam, drop bears on three. One, two, three, drop bears. And so that was it. We had officially taken third place. There was nothing more for us to do except queue up on the side of the pitch and watch the finals happen. We couldn't help but feel a bit wistful, thinking about what could have been. But we didn't dwell on it because we had a medal ceremony to get to. Let's welcome Australia! Even though we were just a bunch of chumps playing Quidditch, we were the happiest chumps you could find. I realized I forgot to record an outro, so like and share the video and also check out your local Quidditch teams. Yeah.